Welcome to the Senior Moment. This is Connie Clark with Home Helpers, and today in the studio with me I have Dave Hensel, and he is with Spokane Hyperbaric Center. And I heard Dave talk at a meeting I was at a few weeks ago talking about what a hyperbaric center and all of that does, and it was extremely interesting. So I asked him if he would come in and talk on the radio as to what all of that is, um, what the chamber does, what kind of conditions it's used for, and you, I think you're going to find this very interesting. So welcome, Dave. Thank you. So first off, explain what a hyperbaric chamber does. What does that do? Okay. Uh, it's a chamber that uh, we increase the pressure. That's called hyperbaric. The Air Force uses one that reduces pressure to simulate high altitude, hypobaric. So the hyperbaric is what's used for medical purposes, besides bends, which most everybody knows. Yeah, that's what you would associate it with. Right. Most everybody um, thinks of uh, divers that get into trouble. They use the hyperbaric chamber like we have. But it's used in a lot of medical conditions beside that. Well, what does it do? By increasing that pressure, what does that do to your body? Okay, there's two things that primarily happen. We uh, give you 100% oxygen while your body is under pressure. And that causes two major items to occur. First one is called angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is the birth of new little capillary blood vessels. You and I have enough uh, enough capillaries to go around the world between one and two times. Wow. Say. Yeah. And we we increase that by a, a major factor. So that actually makes them grow in your body? Yes. We develop new ones. And what that does is it gets blood into some of the areas that might be what they call hypoxic or low on oxygen because blood is the only way you get oxygen to your tissue is through the blood. You, you, you don't get oxygen through the skin. That's negligible. It all comes by way of the blood, and 97.5% is the hemoglobin molecule, and the other 2.5% is um, the plasma or the liquid part of the blood. That's one. We, we grow these new capillary blood vessels, and they call it angiogenesis. The other item, which was just recently discovered, actually in 2005, and the report came out in 2006, the University of Pennsylvania did the study and found that if you spend 40 to 60 hours in a hyperbaric chamber, one hour increments, your own stem cell production goes up by 800%. Wow. That's huge. The stem cell is this marvelous little cell that can actually morph or change into any cell. So it can repair damaged tissue, damaged organs. It's, a, it's an amazing cell. The only problem is as we get older, we produce less. When you're young and you're growing and expanding, you know, you have a lot of stem cells, but as you get older, it's less. So, so, so is this the fountain of youth going into this? Yeah, it's awful close. That's <laughs> <laughs> what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, so I can, when you're talking about increasing the number of capillaries and, and actually increasing stem cells, right? then the thought comes up of, well, there's a whole lot of different medical conditions that needs that to happen in order to mend. Absolutely. In fact, is if you think, would it help this medical condition, all you have to think for a minute is, would additional oxygen help it? Would stem cells help it? And a lot of times the answer is yes. Now, unfortunately, here in the United States, the insurance only pays for 15 medical conditions. And that's crazy because I've seen on your brochures there's a whole lot of other ones that it can help that the United States insurance does not recognize. That's a, that's a fact. We're the lowest in the world. If you go over to Europe, amongst all those countries, they average out about 65 different medical conditions that their insurance pays for. You go to Asia, and it goes from 75 up to 90 conditions. Wow. And in some places, the world, over 100. 
So it's a big item in other countries. Here it's not very popular. What is the one medical condition that you see the most of, of people coming over there to use your chambers? The ones that are recognized by insurance okay. are items such as what they call soft tissue radionecrosis, which that means radiation burns. And if they say soft tissue, that's soft tissue. If they say uh, osteoradionecrosis, that's your bones. And uh, when you have too much radiation, it compromises the blood flow to the bone, and you can get into some serious problems. For example, I have a patient right now that had uh, radiation on his jaw, lower part of his neck and jaw. I don't even know why the radiation might have been thyroid or something like that. And now his teeth are all falling out. Oh, my goodness. It compromised all the blood supply to the teeth. They die, get loose. Right. And then the up. bones all go away and all right. of that. Right. Now, that's, that's one of the primary ones we see is radiation burns. There are other other items that we see quite often that are not covered by insurance, and that is, I'll just give you a list, autism, uh, stroke victims, MS. Let me stop for a minute as you're going through this list, because you had told us something about stroke victims that all of us in the audience were totally amazed when you described um, what happens, and I forget what country it was you were talking about. Italy. Okay, tell that story, please. Yes, uh, Italy um, is one of the foremost uh, hyperbaric research in the area of strokes. And they actually have a rule over there that if um, a doctor has a patient with a stroke and they're not in the chamber within a certain time, and I think it's 72 hours, they can revoke the doctor's license. They're really serious about this. Oh, they're serious. But their end result is amazing. They have, they say between 75 and 80% of all their stroke victims come back to a 100% level. And that includes strokes from the little TIA all the way over to a full-blown aneurysm. We don't have a record anywhere near that. Nowhere near that, no. Nowhere near. Now, the nice thing about that particular research is they're finding out that even 10 to 15 years after the stroke, if they haven't gotten all their function back, there is still a chance that the hyperbaric can help. A doctor did a research on this very thing in the United States on the East Coast, a Dr. Richard Neubauer, and he took stroke victims that had to be 10 years post-stroke or more that had not gotten all their function back. Now, are you talking physical or uh, mental Could or be both? both? Okay. Could be both. Okay. And uh, he was really surprised. Now, some didn't improve much because they probably improved as much as they're going to. And others were really surprising how much they improved. And what it is is at the center of the stroke, that portion, if it's a total blockage because of a blood clot, that pro- portion probably dies. But there's an area around it that's had uh, the oxygen supply is compromised. It's reduced. And what they're saying in uh, some of the research papers now is when the oxygen is reduced down to the 65 or 60% level of its normal oxygen supply, the cell quits functioning but stays alive. What a cell is saying, I have enough oxygen to stay alive but I don't have enough to stay alive and do my job. So it quits doing its particular job. For example, in some of those tests that Dr. Neubauer did, I think it was one patient who was a musician, and the stroke probably hit in his music department because he couldn't carry a tune or whatever it was that he was related to music. And after all those years, when he got in the chamber, it started coming back. So that means those cells were there all the time, and alive, but not doing their job because of shortage of oxygen. And there's where angiogenesis comes in. We actually can build new little capillaries into that portion of the brain too, and all of a sudden get oxygen that it was 
short of. Now, when you're talking about bringing someone into the chamber, you're not talking just one session. You're talking multiple sessions, correct? Yes. A normal regimen of treatments in any chamber around the United States is 40 treatments. And that's one hour each? One hour each. We can do two a day, five days a week. You can do one a day, five days a week. They don't recommend doing less than that. It's, well, I just use it as an example. It's kind of like an antibiotic. When you want to start on an antibiotic program, they want you to continue it on a regular basis right. until you're finished. So the two a day, five days a week is very common with some of our patients. because, And that's still a month. It's a, it's a, it actually is, um, takes quite a bit of time. A but it's well a commitment worth it. of time, but uh, very well worth it. And I didn't mean to stop you when you were saying, you know, the list, but when you were talking, uh, when I heard you and you talked about Italy right. and the stroke, I was just totally amazed. Yeah. Um, and, and MS, for example, I'll just mention that one. MS is treated in Europe on a regular basis, paid for by the insurance. And England being one of the foremost countries that treats MS with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. I think they have almost a hundred mono chambers, that's one person at a time, dedicated strictly to MS in New Eng in uh, England. And what they've found is that they can stop the progression of the MS, push it back in fact. And it's an autoimmune disease, so eventually it turns around and starts, your immune system starts rising again and it uh, starts attacking this insulation on your nerve. It's so it's not a permanent fix, but it's... In autoimmune, it is not. Okay. But in an MS patient, for example, you can be totally free of any um, worsening of your condition for probably 18 months to two years. Then you come in for only maybe eight or 10 treatments. You don't need to take the full regimen again. And then you're back again good for another 18 months or two years. That's really interesting. I have a number of friends who have that. Uh, and I've told them about this since I heard you speak. I, do, I don't know how many people know, but the county just to the west of Spokane, L Lincoln County, uh, county seats Davenport, has the highest rate of MS per capita in the United States. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's just amazing. Hmm. Wonder why. You yeah, know? you kind of wonder. Well, they did, a, they did a search a while back thinking it might be the overflow from Hanford, but they ruled it out. It wasn't radioactive. Some other cities were more in line. I think Colfax was one and didn't have the rate of MS. So they're back to water, maybe hmm. uh, sprays and things like that. Interesting. Um, one of the other ones that's on this is fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, we treat quite a few, and it's one of the more um, common. Uh, for some reason, it's more in ladies than it is in men. Of course, on the other hand, autism is more in boys than it is in girls. Now, what does it do for autism? Autism, we treat quite a few autistic children. Children come to us in various levels of, um, well, they say low performing or high performing. Um, we've had some, in fact, my own grandson went through the course, very low functioning uh, autistic at about uh, 24 months. Some of them in 40 treatments, they all of a sudden come out of their shell and the first thing you know, they're back in school. Other ones may take two or three regimens of 40 each before they finally improve. Um, just recently, we've been, we've been conscious that all women that bring in a child with autism almost always ties it in with uh, vaccinations. I've heard that. Now, medically, they, they wouldn't uh, come to that agreement because they never had a test, I guess, that performed it. But just recently came across my desk, I think it was just a week ago, the first true document, I guess, that shows it is tied in with vaccinations. And you know, when I was young, 
I think I can only remember getting three vaccinations. Yeah, they weren't that many. I remember that. And, and now to, they've got lots of ones. Today, if you go according to the recommendations, I think it is by six years old, you'll have 48 shots. That's crazy. And the problem is some of the preservatives in the shots are mercury-based. One is called thimerosal. It's a preservative. And um, it's, I think, 40% mercury by weight. So it's... Yeah, yeah. I've, I've read a lot of things on that. Um, one of the other things that you have on here is traumatic brain injury. And yes. I have a friend, I believe, that had traumatic brain injury, and I think he was in a chamber, and it oh, helped. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, so that helps bring life back to those cells that were injured? Absolutely. Sometimes it's almost the same uh, scenario as a stroke. Because of the injury, you probably got a, an area that's compromised for blood flow. And so uh, we have, that's a, one of the popular ones right now. I have two students there with football injuries from head injuries because of sports, football. Um, they're both just starting, so I can't tell you these two, but we've treated several others, and it's amazing. They all come in in a wheelchair, and 40 treatments later, be walking out. Yeah, and you know, that's crazy that it, it's on the bottom list that I'm looking at that um, I guess these are the ones insurance does not cover. And, no. and I would think that it would be on the top list. It should be. It should be, <laughs> yeah. I it mean, sh should be. that's really crazy. I would like to mention in, uh, in uh, strokes um, and uh, brain injury, let's take brain injury, I didn't mean strokes. A lot of the service people are coming back from the war with uh, both TBI, traumatic brain injury, and that post-traumatic stress disorder. It has been proven through several small grants with small numbers of servicemen with that problem that it's very effective. But we still can't seem to get the VA to agree to it. So uh, we just keep hoping. Well, we need to take a break, but I want to continue talking about all of these conditions because, again, I know that the audience is very interested in hearing about this, and I was just totally blown away at your talk. And Thank all you. the information. So we're going to take a break and we will be right back. Um, they cut off this yeah, part. see, this is the part where I stop so you can see that in just a moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, now, what other, there's, um, I don't know which subjects you have in mind there, but uh, we've covered some of the m main ones probably already. Um, brain injury can be also from accidents. And so I've had several of those uh, come to me in a wheelchair and um, leave. And you brought something up about brain injury. Yes, we do treat brain disease. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, what other ones I don't know of for... Uh, you, you have on here migraine headaches and cough. Migraines, we can bring that one up. That's a good one. Absolutely. Yeah. Migraines is a, a good one mm -hmm. because there's more people with migraines than you would oh, yeah. think. And um, I, I, I'm not sure what causes it, but there's a lot of them do. And um, back up to your brain surgery, you had the five year plan for that. I think Absolutely. I've been in one of those programs where I got that. Okay. You, you bring that up, and we'll, we'll okay. be happy to discuss that. So, so for the next section, what I want to do is talk about some of these Okay. about brain injury training. Sure. Because a lot of people, I think, especially in Kearney City, know it's strictly a fire and wound that's going to go out and bite themselves in the face. I'll mention the, the different types. Right. Okay. Because we all come up with that. Yeah, sure. Okay. We can do that. So, are you ready? You bet. And we're back. Welcome back to the Senior Moment. Again, this is Connie Clark with Home Helpers. And today I've been talking with Dave Hensel, and we've been talking about the Spokane Hyperbaric Center and all the different kinds of medical conditions that uh, a hyperbaric chamber can help with. And I just, I f 
I'm going to throw this in here, and we'll continue talking, but I find it very disturbing that the United States insurance companies only will cover uh, this kind of treatment for 15 different types right. of, of medical conditions, whereas across the world there are so many other countries, some of which that we think are behind us in technology, when in fact they're in front of us uh, so far as treating Absolutely. And what you said about Italy and strokes, you know, I would have never I, I, thought I can of tell that. you that it's more common in the country of Turkey than it is in the United and States. And see, that's totally crazy. <laughs> but there are there's a huge list that you have on here of different medical conditions, both covered by insurance and those not covered by insurance, right. um, that this can help. And one of the subjects we talk about a lot on the senior moment is diabetes and some of the effects that diabetes has on our body. And one of the things that we've talked about in the past has to do with the decrease of blood flow, mm -hmm. especially to your extremities. And that's why a lot of people, when they have a sore or something on their foot, it doesn't heal, it goes into gangrene, and they have to um, have those limbs um, amputated. You know, it starts with the toes and goes on up. Right. And diabetic wounds is one of the things on this list that you have that insurance covers. That is true. Do you see a lot of that, or do people just not know? Well, we, we should see more, probably, because diabetes is definitely on an increase. Um, we've had some where they were just a week, uh, a week or two from amputation, and they're using hyperbarics as a last-ditch effort and cancel the amputation. The first, some come in with their feet already turned black. Oh, my heavens. And it just looks like there's no chance. And the first thing you notice in taking oxygen therapy in a chamber is the toenails start changing from black to deep purple, finally to blue, and finally just baby wow. pink. Wow. And you can know something has happened. Now, the skin doesn't change because it's dead, and eventually it sloughs off and new skin replaces it. Uh -huh. But in toenails, you can see the results very quickly. So if someone is in that situation, and I know that happens a lot in our skilled nursing facilities. Sure. Where, you know, they have a wound, and of course it's not going to heal because their blood circulation is not as it should be. Right. A lot of insurances cover this. They and do, and I should mention this, Connie. In hyperbaric medicine, they only allow us to include it under an insurance policy when it's a Wagner three. What's that Wagner mean? is the scale of the severity of the wound. So Wagner one is just in the skin. Wagner two is below the skin on top of the muscle. Wagner three is deep in the muscle. And Wagner four is you see the bone. Most of the time when we see them, we're already probably seeing the bone. And in Wagner one and two, they won't cover in a chamber. They want to try that with medication. So they want to wait till the last possible moment. Unfortunately, that's okay. probably the best way to explain it. I wish that they could bring them to us sooner. And the other one is osteomyelitis, infection of the bone. And if it's severe enough, that's on the list. The insurance will pay for it. But a lot of times, they don't l bring them to us and covered by insurance until they've tried everything else. So we've seen it where osteomyelitis if it's a well in your toe, and if they don't get it off far enough, fast enough, well, then it creeps up, and then they got to take your leg off at the, oh I mean, at the ankle. Yeah. And if they didn't catch it there, they got to go higher. And one boy we know of went all the way up to his hip. Wow. So if they could get them to us earlier, we could stop it. It really works. It works. But um, And we've had several cases and done very well with them. So that's an option out there, you know, just so you know, that's an option. Absolutely. Um, one of the ones that's down further that unfortunately is not on the insurance list is migraines. Yes, migraines. Uh, we treat quite a few migraines. Migraine headaches um, sometimes do not require all 40 treatments. It's one of the few. And uh, what happens is all of a sudden when they start taking the treatments, the time period between each headache starts widening out and further and further and further. 
Um, we've treated some, um, I think, around 20 treatments, and the migraines never showed up again. Um, had one lady, she's probably our most distant patient, came from Guam, the island of Guam out in the South Pacific, and when she arrived, she had migraines, but she had it listed as complex migraines. And I asked her, what is complex migraine? She says that means 24-7. Oh, my goodness. And they all went away. She took 40 treatments, and they all went away. Wow. And we've checked with her now. Oh, she's probably been out for nearly a year, and she hasn't gotten any back. Fantastic. Yeah, it's good. When we were talking before about traumatic brain injury, during the break you had said something to me about car accidents. The car accidents, we see quite a few, like young people with motorcycle accidents and car accidents, maybe too much power for their experience. <laughs> <laughs> we have all heard cases like that. Yes. Anyway, we've had uh, several that come in almost paraplegic uh, in a wheelchair. One young man from Idaho here, uh, I, don't, I think he fell asleep, went off the road and hit a concrete culvert. And... Um, almost um, paraplegic. He had to move a little bit of his feet. Anyway, um, he took the treatments, and he is walking with a cane. He went back to school, finished a course in junior college, and bought his own car, and doing very well. But it's amazing how much improvement he we saw with him. Yeah, and it's just crazy, because I can probably say every one of these conditions to you and you've got a story about somebody that it has helped yes um and i just want to go through this list if you don't mind because i know we don't have time to talk about every one of them okay but if you could kind of just mention each one of those so that the audience gets to hear both those things covered by insurance and those not covered and also talk about if it's not covered by insurance what all that means are we talking hundreds of thousands of dollars or Be what? happy to get into that okay okay well those that are covered by insurance uh, for example carbon monoxide poisoning uh, the hyperbaric chamber is probably the only thing that works on hyperbar on uh, carbon monoxide poisoning and that particular uh, diagnosis requires the highest pressure. We go up to two additional atmospheres. You have to understand all the treatments get 100% oxygen and pressure. The only thing that changes is the amount of pressure. Okay. They always get 100% oxygen, but the amount of pressure and more pressure isn't always better. For example, autism, we only put in a half an atmosphere. If you go to one atmosphere, they don't progress as fast as with a half an atmosphere. So it depends on what the diagnosis That's is. That's right. Okay. So carbon monoxide is the highest, and we're on standby with the sheriff's department and others that if they find a family that, uh, you know, left some Something on in the house. On, okay. And uh, if, it's a silent killer, so unfortunately a lot of them don't wake up. L let me ask you this. I don't want to distract. Um, but say, for example, you have a child that has fallen into a pool mm -hmm. and been without oxygen. Near-death drowning. They call right. It. Mm -hmm. Would this sort of thing help oh, someone like that? Big time. My okay. first patient was a little girl, 12 months old, that had fallen into a bathtub after her older sister had taken a bath and forgot to drain it. And then they were missing her, and all of a sudden they found her floating face down in the tub. And um, they resuscitated her, called 911 on the way to the hospital. She died again, and they resuscitated her. Just from that short time of lack of oxygen, she had gone blind, had to feed her with a tube, and she was totally flaccid, no movement. And uh, you should have seen her at the end of 43 months. Just um, squirming. We didn't know how good her eyesight, but she'd track everybody going across the room. And uh, she's walking now and doing very well. Wow. I sp I'm sorry, I didn't mean to distract you. No. But I kind of thought about that when you said that. Okay. Well, the near-death drownings and near-death electrocutions both are 
the hyperbaric chamber is probably the best tool out there for them. Okay. And uh, we get them once in a while. Um, decompression illness, that's bends. And that's what everybody is pretty much... That's the only thing I w- would think of. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, the Navy it, did all the research on the chamber because they've been involved with as a decompression chamber for Navy divers, you know, probably since the Navy began. And so that is probably the leading um, researcher. They made charts that we still follow today on how long you're down at a certain pressure and before you can take the second treatment, things like that. Gas gangrene, gas or air embolism, or some of the other ones. Uh, Crush injuries, we get some of those where it's a bad accident. Um, Crush injuries where you just get Mm -hmm. a leg, uh, you know, just smashed. That uh, insurance will pay for. Okay. And it's a pretty fast response. Um, Progressive necrotizing infections. That is the um, flesh-eating bacteria that can wipe you out pretty quick. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Yes. Well, that's covered by insurance mainly because in that case, it's a cooperation between us and the surgeon. As the tissue turns black when this bacteria takes over, he takes it away, puts it back in the chamber. In the chamber, some will turn black right in front of your eye. Back to the surgeon, takes it away, bring it back in the chamber. And it's a race if you can stop this before it kills the patient. Wow. And uh, sometimes it's a, it's a real struggle. Um, osteomyelitis, which I already mentioned once, osteoradionecrosis, that's radiation burns, soft tissue, radionecrosis, cyanide poisoning, a chamber, will, you will pay for it. I mean, insurance will pay for it. By the way, diabetic wounds, I see that's on that list. Diabetic wounds um, come in various types, pressure wounds, you know, just from, Mm -hmm. you see those in in, in nursing homes. They respond very well. But you said it has to be a certain degree. Depth of wound. Right. That's the only problem. But sometimes you can have a small area surface but be quite deep. If it's into the muscle and the tendon, then the insurance will pay for it. Okay. Most diabetic wounds aren't just surface wounds. Most, a lot of them are very, de- they go deep pretty quickly. Well, and the good thing about this is when you go in the chamber, it's not only fixing whatever that one condition is that your whole body's in there. You so still if get there's the other benefit. things, yeah, if there's That's other right. things going on in your body, absolutely, it's taking care of it. And we have people come in sometimes with multiple conditions, and the primary one is the one that they come in there for. And they find out some of the others improved even better than they would have expected. And it's all part of the same type of treatment. Well, and and I see one of the items down here that's not on the insurance list is rheumatoid arthritis. So if you went in for something up at the top list, uh, your arthritis would be gone (laughs) when you got done. That would be a good thing. help it, yeah, absolutely. That would be a good thing. So it's the same treatment. The only thing would be the pressure change. And many of those... It might even be the same pressure. We usually use about four different pressures, uh, a half, a one, a one and a half, and a two additional mm-hmm. atmospheres. And an atmosphere, uh, for the listeners, is 15, 14.7 PSI. That's one atmosphere. So, for example, if you're a diver and you go into the ocean, salt water, Every 33 feet of salt water is one additional atmosphere. So it's not like you're feeling all of this pressure on the outside of your body that's really uncomfortable. It's just like if you're diving. It's pretty neutralized because you might have the pressure on the outside, but you also have it on the inside because through your nostrils, your nose, and everything, the pressure equalizes. It's squeezing the tissue but you have equal pressure inside versus outside. It doesn't feel like your body's being no, mushed. No, I've been down to almost uh, 185 feet in uh, a chamber in Seattle, and um, your voice starts changing as you get up there. You get, all of a sudden, I could sing soprano. <laughs> and the other thing is, it's really odd, but uh, everything a patient says down there is funny. They <laughs> laugh at anything. If you just gave them your address, they'd laugh. That sounds like a good time. Oh, yeah. (laughs) 
Uh, maybe I should offer that as a, another type of treatment. Um, one of the ones, now we're going to go through the list of medical conditions that this will help with, but that insurance in the United States does not cover. Right. Okay. So that was autis- autism, you were saying. Autism, strokes, um, MS, that's multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, vegetative coma. That's a good one. Had a girl that was a professional horse rider and jumper. Got tossed off on one of the jumps and the horse's hoof came down on her head. That happened before our clinic was open. But she was three months in the coma with the doctors trying to get her out of the coma. And they finally sent her home and said, make her comfortable. This is the way she's going to be. Vegetative coma. And the mother didn't put up with that. She says there's got to be something. And so she heard about the chamber as a possibility and started with a private chamber in Canada where she found one in the city of Vancouver. I think it was only six or seven treatments. She started to track people going across the room. Then her progress was very slow. 40 didn't do much. 80 didn't do much. So they just kept giving her more kept treatments. Kept doing it. We came in at about 100, no, about 250, up to 300 treatments. She's laughing. She uh, she drives. She's a vibrant gal. She still has a little bit of slur on her speech. But what a difference between wow. that and vegetative coma. Yeah. Another one, uh, we had a, uh, this was a sister um, chamber of ours in Michigan, a girl got encephalitis, that's swelling of the brain, and she passed out, 10 years old. And um, they had a hard time getting her out of it. And someone emailed her and said, get her in the chamber, get her in the chamber. Well, the hospital wouldn't do it because it's not one of the 15. Right. And you, they can't go beyond the 15. So she went to a private chamber. Just a few treatments, she was already out of it, but she had to learn how to walk and talk because she'd been out that long. But what a difference. Uh, Traumatic brain injury we talked about, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, have one there right now. That responds pretty quick. I think he's only had like uh, eight or ten treatments, and he says, I got a lot more energy now. Wow. So if you're always tired, come and see us. Bell's palsy, that's where one side of the face uh, sags, and um, this works quite well for Bell's palsy. Parkinson's disease, um, it definitely slow, helps slow it down. We don't see the regression as much as we do in MS, but we can slow the process down quite a bit. And I don't have as much experience with Parkinson's as I do with MS. Okay. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis we talked about that definitely helps Lyme disease Lyme disease is quite prevalent and people think well there's no deer ticks around here well Lyme now is considered to be one of the fastest moving plagues in the world and it can be transferred through mosquitoes flies, ticks um, many different kinds of insects all kinds of critters Person to person through um, bodily fluids. Uh, it can come through mother's milk to her children. Now they claim in one study that it can come through from cow's milk to human. Uh, Lyme disease is a little spirochete, little corkscrew organism. And right now, Lyme disease can mimic over 350 diseases, make them look so much like. MS or Parkinson's, that that's what you think you have, and it's really Lyme. So we treat quite a few with Lyme, and it definitely helps. The normal treatment for Lyme is usually antibiotics and not a real high success rate. So that's Lyme. Um, I'm looking on my list here, the migraines we talked about, Menoir's disease, cluster headaches, 
Uh, RSD is uh, the condition where they're very sensitive to their skin touching anything, even the bed sheet at night and such. And hmm. it definitely helps on RSD. And then they got wound healing. Even though wound healing, diabetic wounds are up above, and the ones that are covered, there's a lot of wounds that aren't covered. That doesn't mean we can't help you. Okay. But it's a private sector. Then. Right. Well, we need to take a break, but I want to come back and talk about what these chambers look like. Sure. Um, because, again, my picture, when we started talking about them a few weeks ago, was this long chamber you lay in. But that's not totally oh. the truth. That's not all of it. That's right. So we're going to take a break, and we will be right back. horses? No. Well, all the horses that go to the Kentucky Derby and things like that, they put them in a chamber several hours, several days before a race. Wow. To make sure that they got everything, everything going. tip-top shape and no sore muscles or tendons. Wow. Or like that. Interesting. So when you talk about the type of chamber, we can mention it. Okay. All right. All right. You ready? And we're back. Welcome back to the Senior Moment. Again, this is Connie Clark with Home Helpers, and I have Dave Hensel here with the Spokane Hyperbaric Center. And we've been talking about the medical conditions that this sort of treatment could help, both those that are covered by insurance and those that are not. And he's been talking about chambers and, and different um, oxygen coming in and the pressure. And when he first started talking about this a few weeks ago, my picture in my mind of what it looked like was this long chamber with a person laying there all by themselves, and it's all encrusted in plastic, and you lay there for an hour. But that is not the case because you explain there you've got a multiple-person chamber. That's right. And if they're in there laughing, there's a party going on because you said you everything. You could have a big party going on. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, it, it, they come in different categories. The ones that you're talking about laying uh, in a small tube is called a mono chamber, one person. It's almost like the old iron lungs. That's what I was thinking in, in my head, days. yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there are multi-place chambers, and that means anything over one. Ours happens to be 16. We can seat 16, and we have two different sections within the chamber, which means I can do two different pressures at the same time. One is seats 12, and one seats 4. And that works out very well. If I have a lot of them in one type of pressure, I mm -hmm. can put them in there. You can have and kids on one side and adults absolutely. on the other. And uh, while you're in there, you can read a book. We show a movie, for, particularly for kids, if we have autistic children. It keeps them kind of spellbound. If we have children that do not want to go in there without their mom or dad, we can handle that with a multi-place because mom and dad can go in there and sit with them. A mono chamber that you can't do. Yeah, because when we were talking about autistic children, I could just picture a two-year-old yeah. laying still for two hours or an hour. That's not going to happen. Not my children. Yeah, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then there's other chambers. There is actually animal chambers, some for small animals, cats and dogs, and then there's chambers for horses. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but in big... Um, thoroughbred racing like the Kentucky Derby those horses all spend time in a chamber for maybe one or two weeks before the race an hour a day or whatever to make sure all their muscles and tendons are in tip-top shape for the race yeah that's interesting you told me that and I, I thought well wow, that's really neat you know that you don't know that they don't talk about that on no. derby day no you know and the other thing is uh, sports teams. Sports teams, the professional ball clubs, almost all of them have their own chamber. And this is interesting because they keep track of their downtime or sick time. And when you pay some sports figure big dollars, I don't know what 
the amounts are eleven million dollars a year. Lots something. more than I'll see. Well, they don't want them sitting in the sick room. They want them out on the ball field, and so they try to get them back to tip top shape as quick as they can. They keeping records before they got the chamber and keeping records after they got the chambers. And they find out that they can have them back on the field in less than half the time. Wow. So that tells you something. And that includes broken bones or pulled tendons or whatever. Well, and that's a good thing because there has been a lot of discussion in recent years about traumatic brain injuries in players when they get concussions Absolutely. out on the field. And so if they're able to go into this sort of treatment immediately after. Sooner the better. Then it's going to be better for those ball players who are getting hurt. That's right. Absolutely. So these chambers, uh, they come in various sizes, obviously, when I talk about multi-place, a lot of them maybe four or six. I just happened to find this large one at a, in Texas. There was two hospitals that merged, and they both had chambers. So they made one surplus and put in a cardiology department and I ended up buying it. So it was a very nice chamber. It was actually a, a large 12-foot diameter going off to the side of it that I didn't take, but it was a lot bigger than what I have now. Originally, they were talking about putting an operating room in a chamber, and the first um, open-heart surgery in South Africa, which uh, I forgot the doctor's name, was done in a chamber. So they haven't followed up on that. I guess the benefit wasn't worth the, the complexity of trying to do it inside of a chamber. Interesting, very interesting. So when someone were to come over there to have a chamber treatment, you're not going in necessarily to lay in this tube. You can bring a book. You can sit and sure. read a book. You and if you have a it. comedy on, it's going to be funnier than it's ever been, even if you've seen it before. <laughs> the higher the pressure, the funnier it gets. <laughs> now, you you can go in there. You, some people just elect to doze off and sleep. Uh, you can read a book, do crossword puzzles, or watch the television. Now, when we talk about insurance paying for this, we assume insurance is paying for it. Yes. But when we're talking about those medical conditions that insurance doesn't pay for, are we talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for this kind okay. of treatment? I can tell you. Um, our charge is $140 a treatment, which means for 40 treatments, it'd be $5,600. We have our own medical staff and our doctor who will uh, give an exam for everyone that goes in just to make sure. There's just a couple items that can keep you out of the chamber. One is you got to be able to clear your ear. You know what I'm talking about? Like you go over a mountain pass and you hear your ears Your ears pop, pop. okay. That's got to happen because we're changing the pressure. Just like in a plane. And once in a while we get somebody that has a hard time, and a lot of times it's wax impacted. So we send them over to an ear doctor, he flushes them out, and they have no problem. The other one is if a person has had tendency to a collapsed lung, they call it pneumothorax. If you have that tendency, you're probably not a good candidate. In the years now, we're pushing six, seven years that we've been open. I haven't run into one yet, but they're out there. So we usually require a chest x-ray that the radiologist can tell you whether you have that tendency, just to make doubly sure. If you have a pacemaker, almost all of them now are okay for pressure. Some of the real old ones were not, but I don't even see those anymore. So at $140 a treatment, or 5600 includes everything. Um, insurance at a typical hospital costs, it'd be about 125000 Yeah, and that's what I was thinking, because most of the chambers are located in hospitals. That's true. Absolutely. And I think this one here, there's not too many private chambers around. Is that no. correct? No. They're, they're increasing every day now. Uh, it seems to more people are aware of a chamber. Um, I would guess that private chambers, including the mono chambers, is probably in the neighborhood for the whole country, maybe 200. I'm kind of guessing here. But for example, I'm the only uh, hard shell chamber, steel chamber, in eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, most all of Idaho except Pocatello in that southeast corner, all of Montana. 
North Dakota. The first one going east is Minneapolis. So there are not a lot of them. You get into California, there's more. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona has a multi-place. Sacramento has a multi-place. Salt Lake City has a multi-place. And then uh, over in Seattle, there's three mono chambers, uh, three different clinics that have mono chambers. So there's a few around. And in Seattle, when I started, there was only, I think, one. So two more have come in since then. Um, so they're slowly increasing. But you couldn't go as a private person being private pay and go into a hospital and do this. No. I don't think you could afford it just well, they, because they, of what they have to charge. And uh, they won't do it. I took my training at the Virginia Mason Hospital, which is a large hospital in Seattle, and they have a large chamber, 19 place. Uh, they, have, they teach courses for hyperbaric technicians and all of that. And uh, they just told us if uh, they come in with MS or so, they can't treat them. Even if you have the cash in hand, they still can't do it. So you would have to go to a private one. You would. So I'm being I'm off label. They call it a private chamber. I have a lot more flexibility than a hospital would be, except they have a convenience of having doctors and all the technicians all that there. close by. Um, but if it was something that insurance did not cover, you couldn't go there. So you would have to go to a private. That's right. Uh, yeah. Now, if someone wants more information on all of this, because I've s looked on your website and there's a whole bunch of information on your website about this, um, sure. where would they go to find more information? Well, we're located in the valley, okay. not too far from the Valley Mall. Our address is 13007 East Mission Avenue. So that's just on the opposite side of Mission from the Valley Hospital, which most people know and a little further east at the corner of Mission and McDonald. Our, uh, we have a website, SpokaneHyperbarics.com. So it's www.SpokaneHyperbarics.com. And the phone number there uh, at the clinic is 509, of course, 922-6552. And if they have any questions, I'll just put out my uh, cell phone because I'm happy to talk to people about that, and that's 509-680-3833. And this list that we're talking about of all these conditions, I looked on the site, and it's on there, so if you want to go in and take a look, Absolutely. find out more information. Come uh, by, we'll give you the Cook's Tour. <laughs> and, and the more information, the better, especially when you're dealing with one of these things, and you're at your wit's end, and, and you've been told there's nothing else that can be done. You know, why not? Why it's, not try it? It's been a ray of hope for a lot of people that thought there was no way. And and it really is interesting to find out that the sports teams are doing this. Yes, and you really don't hear athletes. that much about it. No, but, you don't. But they haven't. Um, and they've seen that it has really helped. Definitely, definitely. And so that is a very powerful statement right there. Yeah. Plus the racehorses. <laughs> Yeah, and the racehorses. Don't forget those. <laughs> Don't forget the racehorses. You know, when I watch the Kentucky Derby the next time, I'm going to look at those horses totally different. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you, Dave, for coming on with me. I really appreciate You're more than you welcome. doing this. This is such interesting information. And, again, when I first, you know, heard you speak – my initial reaction was, what? What is? I don't understand all yeah. this that you're talking about. But the more you talk, the more interesting and fascinating, especially that the world is, is more up on this than our local insurance companies are. Yeah. And That's there's true. probably a lot of other conditions that aren't on your list that other countries yeah. use it for. There's a list of over 100. Wow. That it actually helps in a big way. So things like vertigo and things that, you know, I don't have it on my list, but it works beautifully. Well, check it out. If you've got something that you're dealing with and you really don't know where to turn, this might be an option. Give me a call. Thanks, Dave, for coming on. More than welcome. And you've been listening to The Senior Moment, and you have a wonderful rest of your day. Good day.